Hello all, Jamie Rogers here at Forecast Mania and today we are introducing you to our brand new diet of the week. And this week's diet is kind of special. I have a feeling you're going to really like this one because it opens up an awful lot of opportunities to you. But before we have a little look at the diet of the week for this week, please don't forget to tap subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified of all of our future videos here on our YouTube channel. And of course, if you're watching this video on one of our other platforms, then please make sure that you have subscribed or followed whatever platform it is that you're watching on so you can keep up to date with everything that we have going on here at Craftmania. As I keep telling you, we've got lots going on behind the scenes and we're slowly bringing you more and more and more content and more and more features to make your shopping and your crafting even easier. And we'd love you to be part of our Craftmania family and keep up with everything that we have going on. So this week we are looking at another die brought to you by Oakwood. Now Oakwood have been responsible for our Perry the Penguin and Sammy the Snowman die sets. I love them names, they're so cute. Over the last couple of weeks for our dies of the week. Today they're bringing us another incredible special offer and this one is our A6 Views and Vistas window die set. And there are five different dies in this set. Now of course this can create some beautiful window effects. But with my examples, because you know this is going to make windows, I actually wanted to show you a few different options with them. So I've got seven cards I'm going to be sharing with you to give you some different ideas and concepts on what you could be doing between these five different dies. And I'll share them with you throughout the video. Now, if you would like to purchase not only our die of the week, but any of the bits and bobs you see on the cards as we go through them, then pop onto our website, www.craftmaniacrafts.com. Now, when you land on the website, whether you're on a mobile device or on a laptop or a um, computer, whatever they call these things, I'm terrible with technology, please forgive me, but like a desktop PC, if you're on a desktop or a laptop or an iPad, then you'll have a little menu bar that runs through the middle. If you're on a mobile device, then you're probably going to have a drop down menu. Either either or, it doesn't really matter. On either menu, you will see die of the week. If you give that a little click, it will take you through to a page which shows you all of the dies of the week that we feature here at Craftmania. We literally launch one every Monday and they last either while stocks last or for that week. If we have some left, then they do stay on the website and you can have a little look at them. There's a few that are left sort of in stock and you might be able to bag a few bargains at once if you would like to. But more importantly, you will see the little image for this week's die of the week. Give that a click and it will take you through to a page which is dedicated just for this die and all of the bits that are going to be on the samples I'm going to be sharing with you. So if, for instance, you fall in love with a pot of glitter that I share with you today, or a gem, a pearl, the mirror card, whatever it may be, everything will be on that one page for you. And we do this just to save you traipsing around the website. There's over 10,000 items on the Craftmania website. And if you just want one pot of glitter, we want to make it super easy for you to find it. So it'll all be on that one page for you. Now this week's Die of the Week, whenever we bring you a Die of the Week, we always bring you a special offer to go with it. And this week is no different. This die sh set should be 12 99 but it is on offer for just £5.49p. Now there are rumblings that our PMP charges are going to be changing and changing very soon here at Craftmania. I did think it was going to happen already this week, but the good news is it hasn't quite hit us. But there are going to be changes to the PMP coming shortly. But at the moment, if you spend over £5, your UK PMP is completely free, meaning that this die will be posted to you for your £5.49p, completely free of charge in the UK. Now, if you live internationally, our uh, international PMP is capped at just £10. The most you will spend is £10. Um, if it's actually less than that to post the item to you, we will refund the difference for you. If it costs more than £10, which being honest with you, about 99% of our parcels do, because international shipping is incredibly expensive nowadays. If it costs more than £10, here at Craftmania, we actually pay the difference for you. We've always said this, and it's not changing anytime soon. We try and keep our postage rates as keen and as fair and as friendly as they possibly can be, because we don't want you spending out on PMP more than you have to. So with our international and with our capped UK and all of the different options we bring you, with that now and coming soon, it will be kept as fair and as best value as we can possibly do it. But more on our coming changes in the next few weeks. 
So then, with our die of the week, there are five dies in here, as mentioned, giving us an awful lot of options at what we can create with them. There really is lots and lots of ways in which we can create with these and make fun and unique cards with them. So let's have a little look, let's take you over. Just trying to get my cameras to work properly, sorry. Little delay there. Everything was upside down on my screen and the last thing you want is me upside down. Bad enough you tolerate me as it is, let alone upside down. So here we are, we've got our five different dies within the A6 set. Now as I say, these are designed to create windows. You can absolutely use them to do that if you wish to, but I've quite enjoyed taking them off in different tangents. Now with our outside edges, so we've got our arched window and we've got our sort of landscape or portrait window, our rectangle window, I suppose. Let's start with this one. This one is actually just shy of three and a half inches by approximately, or just over four and a half inches, four and three quarter inches is a rough idea. With this one, it's gonna cut out as you see it. So it's gonna cut that out as one rectangle panel. Now these, these are kind of similar to the dies I've just launched of the circles and squares. So it's kind of giving me that vibe, but with these ones, they've also got a debossed line running around them. I'm gonna bring this up in the hope you can see it, but it is actually a bit like a beveled frame, which is actually really nice and does give that more sort of framed artwork style look to this as a frame which could be really fun depending on what you want to put inside it maybe you want to do a little painting or do some stamping and color it in and then frame it with a nice gold frame so it looks really sort of regal that would be really nice or of course you can use the central part or the outside part to this so again there might be ways you wish to interlock them and play around with them having both pieces so that's our outside frame now of course we can use that as you're seeing it here to cut these bits but it also means we can bring in the windows and we have different window elements for you that you can build together now i've just only brought up four of these for some reason but you can very easily see that you could put those together as six different panels within that outside frame to make a really cool window effect. So maybe you wanna do this and you wanna layer this onto some acetate. You wanna bring in something like fluffy stuff and build it up in the windows. Maybe you wanna do a scene where you're looking out from the window onto a lovely sort of snowman set. Maybe you wanna bring in either Sammy the snowman, the die set we had, or of course Rodney the snowman, our lovely stamp, and create a window looking out at one of those snowmen or one of those sort of winter night effects. Or of course you could go the other way and make it that you're looking through the window and into a front room for Christmas or a toy shop window or something along them lines. And then of course you could put something on there to, to represent those items. Now with the outside of the window, this again is gonna cut out as you see it just here, but it does also have a separate mat and layer to it as such. So you might wish to cut that one out and back your window with a square. If you'd like to do that, then that square is included in the set for you. There is also a little half moon window die as well, which is really super cute. And that again can be used to build up on any side of the square, if that's something you would like to do. It can of course be brought back together to be used as a sort of complete circular window. Or actually what I really love for these is using them as little handles. And I'll show you that when we get onto looking at some cards I've made with them. Then our other die, or the last die in this set, is this really cool kind of church window style die. Now this one, to give you some size ideas, is it's just kind of shy of two and a half inches, maybe two and a quarter inches, I suppose, if I'm being fair. I'm never very good at this, so it's always a bit of a rough estimate, but about two and a quarter inches by just over four inches. So quite a nice size to this one. And just like the rectangle, it is gonna cut out. It's gonna give you that bevel edge detail running around it. So you have a really nice window effect. You then, of course, also receive the part that comes out of the middle. Now, I don't know about you, I've already done my Halloween cards for this year, but I looked at this and thought this looked like a tombstone. And I wanted to bring in a white gel pen and write little riddles on here, you know, like, and I'm not gonna come up with one off the top of my head because it takes me a long time to think of things like these. But you know, when they put little riddles on tombstones, Disney World do this or, or Disneyland, and they make little jokes on them that could be quite funny, um, things like he lost his head and, and things like that. That's not funny, but you get the idea. Uh, you could certainly do that and decorate these up right on them with a gel pen, really bring them into sort of that sort of spooky feel. Maybe add a little, I want to say eagle. Is it eagle to be out at Halloween? It isn't, it's crows, isn't it? But a little scary bird on the top there or a skull at the bottom or something along them lines. Or of course, we could colour it, stamp it, decorate it and turn it into more of a church window insert. That would work really nicely. Or of course, with this opening, 
we can of course bring back in our window panes and we can start building that together to look more like a traditional window. So it doesn't really matter what way you go with this and what way you want to play with it, whether you want to stick to the window scheme with this one or if you want to play with the five dies and create really different things with them, there's lots of options. The other bit I want to note is the little squares that come out from the window. I bought just one of these up to share with you, but when the window cuts, you're going to end up with four of these little squares, which are really, really fun to tile back together and make mosaic style effects. And I've done that on one of the cards, so I'll show you that when we get there. But to me, 549 for five different dies, quite large going down to quite small and opening up a whole window of opportunities, I think this is a great set and one I have a feeling we're going to sell out very, very quickly. So let's show you a bit of inspiration with it so you can see why you need this one and what you're going to be achieving with it. So these window panels that I've bought up a couple of, these are great fun. Maybe you want to carry on adding these and you want to make little corners. Maybe you want to go all the way around a scrapbook page. Maybe you want to yo-yo and bring them out and make little patches with them. The choice is yours. All I've done with mine is cut them and then stuck them overlapping one window pane onto each piece to create this diamond effect. And it reminded me a lot of the striplet dies that we have featured as dies of the week, but we've never had one that's like a lattice such like this one or a lattice that could be created. And certainly not one that's as versatile as being able to make it double deck or out into different patterns or into corners or borders or frames. To me, this one opens up a whole host of options for you all from this one little die. And of course, when we then bring in our flowers and we start trading them up the lattice, that looks really fun. So I would really urge you to have a little go at something along these lines if this is one of the dies that you choose to purchase of our die that we got offered. Then bringing in our next one. So we've gone more for the church window style. Now I've gone very Christmassy with my church window. I did have a little look to see if I could find a candle or something to stand in the middle of it, like a candle die or a candle stamp. I haven't got anything in my stash for that. So instead I've gone for our classic poinsettias and I've put these around the base of the frame and I've stamped the little Christmas wishes and I've done that on top of a panel of polar white card, which I have embossed using a snowflake stencil. So very quick, very simple, very easy to batch make, but hopefully quite effective. And again, I really feel it's this window pane that's sort of pulling it all together and bringing in the structure to our card. And this is something I would urge you to think of when we're looking through these cards. They're not the focal points, they're not the pretty bits, they're the structure that's bringing the card together. They're the lattice in the background, they're the frame around it. And to me, that's quite important because they're the kind of things that we need to really build up and bring in to create some really lovely cards. Now, when we spoke about the frame earlier, I mentioned doing something arty and then framing it. This one's kind of my attempt at that. Um, I've gone for a lovely stamp that's just released. This is one of my stamps. I've stamped it, I've coloured it round card markers. I've added some gold dots onto the middles of the flowers. And then I've gone for a gold frame. And I'm going to goof this up a bit closer in the hope you can see it. That bevel edge that runs around this frame is so delicate and pretty. And it really just gives a professional finish to that frame. I really like that element on these. Uh, and it's a really fun one to add. Of course, the bit from the middle, or the panel I've stamped on, I've cut using the same die set. So I know that's the perfect size. And actually, by sticking this onto black card and then raising the frame, I've got a nice little black frame running around the inside, that little sort of halo effect that runs around the inside of it. You might not see that too well on camera. You might just see more of the foam tape. But actually, when you're looking at the card, seeing that little halo of black coming from around the edge is really nice. In the background, you're going to notice our herringbone design. This was one of our dies of the week a few weeks ago. Um, this is actually the same technique I did for that. I cut it when we did that video. I cut it, I layered it onto some black cards. So I cut from black, layered on black, stuck together, and then went over the top with some gold gilded touch to just give that sort of antique -y feel, which is quite fun and easy to do. And I felt the black, white and gold in the layers matched in perfectly with what I'd achieved for our die of the week this week. So that one come back out to sort of work for this. Now, one of the smallest elements in our set is, of course, this little window. And I said to you about using it as handles and different border elements. You could easily take this and stick multiple together and turn it into a little swaggy border. That could be really nice. I think this is a bit of a sleeper hit. You're going to use this in lots of ways. And for me, the first time I see it, I thought handles on a gatefold. So that's exactly what I've done. I've cut them out of gold. I've cut a larger circle in black. 
I've stuck the window onto the black circle and then trimmed it so that I've got the same border running all the way around it. You could, of course, if you prefer, take the actual die and you know my lovely trick of cutting two at one time. So put your gold card on top of the die first, then put your black card on top of it second, send it through your machine. And nine out of ten times, the black one will come out with the oval as such or with the, um, the half moon shape, but it won't cut out the detail in the middle. It's just too much to ask the machine or the die to cut both the inside, the outside of both the gold and the black at one time. So you tend to end up with like an engraved version in the middle of your design, but the outside tends to come away quite easy. And then that gives you a solid backing to go underneath your die. It works every time or, or most times and it looks really lovely. So for the rest of my card, I've used our Floral Melody stamp and I've stamped that twice. I've pattern matched this so that the design carries on across both panels. And then as we open the card, I've then brought in our rose border and corners set so that it coordinates with the rose, which I feel is more the focal point on the outside here of the card. Now, I was tempted to add a little sentiment or something else into the middle or onto the outside, but I thought I'd show you it in this stage where it's relatively plain and simple because to me it is all about these handles. Now, not only could you use them on gatefold cards like this, but I also think if we're making little boxes or maybe little drawers, this could be a really fun one to use to actually create that style of effect as well on those. Another thing to note as well, sometimes when we make boxes, we like to take out like the little cutting bit, the little finger holder to get the lid off. Now you can of course use a circle die or punch and put it on, but you don't always know if you've got it in an equal measure. If you were to use this die and stick the die onto the card and send it through, it's gonna cut out and you're gonna end up with that little lip taken out, which again is gonna give you that perfect access point. So maybe if you're a journaler, a scrapbooker, a box maker, having something that's gonna take out that half moon for you and know that if by just sticking this die directly to the edge of your card, every time you're gonna end up with that exact same placement without you trying to move around the circle could actually be quite beneficial. So it's another use for that one that you might find handy. Then moving on, let's have a little look. So let's go back to our arched window, shall we? So this again is a very similar card to the one I've made before bringing in a couple of different items and showing you a different way to put them together. And again, it is all about the structure. It's bringing that window element in to give me that height, give me that prominence of where I'm gonna lay out my design. So I've brought in some flowers, I've brought in some foliage and I've arced that round that window, but it also gave me an area here to land the butterfly. And I really appreciated having that structure set out just by having that frame to play with and build around. And I feel this again, we could very easily make this an Easter card, a wedding card, an anniversary card, a Christmas card, depending on the colours and styles of flowers and embellishments we bring into it. All having that sort of very lovely theme brought together with that window panel. Now also in the middle of my one, I've cut one from white. So not only have I done our rose petal pink for the outside frame, I've cut one from white so I could use that middle panel, like when we were talking about the tombstone element earlier, but use this bit and sunk that back on the inside. So there's also a bit of prominence there. Maybe you'd like to do some stamping on there. Maybe you'd like to add a sentiment on there or a pattern on there. Maybe something like our lattice stamp or our script stamp could be quite nice to add on to that one, maybe in a subtle gray to match in or a pink to match in with a pink cardstock and just give that a little bit more of a purpose to having that in there. But it works nicely as it is in plain white. Then moving on, so another one here with our windows. Now, last time I shared with you the windows over here, I show you how we could layer them together. Of course, we don't have to layer them together. We can use them as individual pieces and piece them back together. So I've just taken these and I've matched them up. So I'm gonna try and show you this. I've, I've taken them like so, and I've matched them up with a little gap between them, but I've made it so one panel matches next to the, the one before it. And that made it very easy to be able to choose where to place them and to build out my border. Now I chose on this card to step back each time. So we've gone back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Of course, there's a whole host of ways you could be taking these and building them up to create your borders and your corners and your backgrounds just by the amount you wish to use of them. But I chose to do mine onto a self-adhesive sheet. I've then sprinkled on some little stars and then I've sprinkled on our lovely glitter jewels and diamond sprinkles. This is one of my favorites. If you've never gone into our section of glitter jewels on the website, there are so many cool glitter jewel effects 
all different styles, sparkly um, pieces. They come in lots of different colours, lots of different styles, and they are so much fun. Even the stars, they come in gold and silver and holographic. They're really fun to work with. And if you're working over the top of a self-adhesive sheet, sprinkle on your largest particle first of all. So, uh, sorry, pop down your frames first then sprinkle on your largest particle, then bring in a smaller particle and put that over the top. Give it a good burnish down with like an applicator sponge or your fingers, and then you're gonna have a really cool background that's unique to you because it's one that you've made using all of your different pieces. Now you might wish to bring in pixie powders and mist them with water to activate them as well. You might wish to sprinkle in a little shards of gilding flakes. There's loads you can add to them, but it's just a really fun way to make a background. And if you're trying to glue down delicate pieces, it's a really fun, easy way to glue bits down without having to put glue all the way around them or cut them on, a, on top of a self-adhesive sheet. Then when I was cutting all of these windows, I fell in love with them little um, squares. I mentioned these earlier. These little tiles to me, these little squarey bits, these are so much fun to work with and so easy to get creative with. So I've bought in another piece of a self-adhesive sheet and I've taken those little panels and I've placed them back together all over this area. Just the ones from inside the windows. They look more here than you realise you've actually cut out in there. Um, but very fun to do. Place onto a self-adhesive sheet once again, and then I've put over the top fire red. This is our polished silk glitter. It's the most ultra fine glitter I've ever seen. So I've put that over the top of it. And then once done, I thought, well, actually I want them little squares to have some pattern on them. So of course we could have stamped on them using some stays on ink maybe, something along them lines, or we could have done them from playing card and stamped on top of them. But actually I decided what I was gonna do is put it through an embossing folder. So I've used one of our Nelly embossing folders of stars. Hopefully you can see that okay there. And I've placed it and I've sent it through the machine and it's then given me an embossed panel to work with. And of course, because it's all stuck together, the pattern match goes across each of the tiles, which is something I really like. In the background of this one, you're also seeing our herringbone die used once again. That is one of our previous dies of the week that we still have in stock. So if you do fall in love with a herringbone, I forgot to look up how much it is, I'm sorry. Um, but the herringbone die is a lovely die set. And you, again, you will find a designated page to that on the website. If you'd like to know more about that on the die of the week. And it will, of course, be in the this week's die of the week as just the, that die on its own for you to see it. On the edge here, I've used the classic poinsettia. You've seen that come in a couple of times now. And there's lots of different sizes and pieces to that one. So this time I've gone for more the large pieces. On this one, I went for the small pieces. But it's a lovely die set that gives you this gorgeous debossed effect when it's sent through the machine, which really gives you an elegant finish to your projects and very simple and achievable to do. So that gives you a little glimpse at seven different projects with this Windows die set. And as I said at the beginning, I don't think I ever really used it as a window because we know we can do that. So I wanted to share with you how we could use them as handles, how we could use them as frames, how we could use them to make up our mosaics. But to me, this is one of the best value die sets we've bought you because for only $5.49, you've got them five different options. And as you can see, it's not just like when we bring you a picture die or, or a butterfly die, for instance, where it's just going to create a butterfly with this set you can see how many different styles of cards and ways you can take this to get creative. And to me, that makes this set absolutely incredible value. Now, if you fell in love with it and you would like to order it, pop onto the website, www.craftmaniacrafts.com. And then again, you'll find the die of the week tab, whether it's on the drop down menu or the one going across the page, give it a click, head on through, look for the picture of this die, give that a click and it will open up all the bits we've been looking at. So whether it's the flowers, the butterflies, the stamp, all of the bits we mentioned will be on that page for you. And don't forget currently at the moment, and this is set to change any day now, but currently your PMP is free in the UK anytime you spend five pounds. And if you shop with it internationally, then it is capped at just 10 pounds. If you have any questions that we can help you with, please pop them in the comments and I'll do my very best to answer them for you. If you would prefer to speak to us or you would like to order via phone, then give us a call 01493 843 666 and Daphne will be sure to help you and place your orders or answer your questions or find out the answers if needed. And of course, you can also pop in and see us in store at Craftmania Essentials, 6 Regent Street, Great Yarmouth, Norfolk. 
Thank you very much for watching today's video. I've really enjoyed it. I hope you have. And don't forget to click subscribe, tap the bell, and I'll see you all again very soon for our next video here at Clive Mania. Bye for now.